Prime Minister Kallas, welcome to the programme. Thank you for having me. Um, I want to start by asking you whether you feel, in retrospect, the reaction of NATO and other countries last night was over the top, or did you calibrate it well? You heard what uh, the Russians have said, that, you know, only the U.S. behaved maturely in its reaction to this. We must see the forest behind the trees and not only the trees. I mean, of course, Russia wants us to concentrate on this one incident, but actually the problem is that Russia is waging the full-scale war in Ukraine. And what it means yesterday, they uh, did the biggest uh, uh, rocket attack uh, that they have done so far, hitting civilian in infrastructure, hitting civilians everywhere, trying to make uh, Ukraine really uh, run out of uh, electricity or bombing the electricity grid so that it would be dark and very cold. And this is uh, the reason why we are talking about this. So even, even if, uh, you know, any incident that happens, of course, uh, is up to uh, those people in Poland or Ukraine to investigate. But uh, why we are talking about this in the first place is because Russia is uh, having this uh, full conventional war in Ukraine. So I want to read one of the tweets you, you put out. You, 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 you repeat what many NATO people have said and what you're saying right now. The sole culprit behind this war is Russia. You said, our main takeaway from this, the aggressor will never stop unless he is stopped. The longer it takes, the harder it gets. So do you have a prescription for stopping the aggressor? The prescription is to give Ukraine as much as military aid as we can give so that uh, Ukraine can defend themselves and push the aggressor back to their borders. Uh, this is the only way so that Ukraine will win. The other uh, thing that we have to definitely do is uh, held, uh, hold responsible all those people who are behind the war crimes who are behind the crimes of aggression, so that this will not happen again. But uh, giving military aid right now is, is very important, giving air defense, all these uh, kinds of uh, measures, uh, what we can give so that Ukraine can defend themselves. So I want to ask you, because, you know, you're right there, slap bang, you know, in the neighborhood, very vulnerable to any kind of Russia action, should there be any Russia action towards any NATO country. You've all given as much as you can. Uh, certainly, the smaller countries have given proportionally a lot more. There are countries like France, major military powers, that are not giving the extent of the weapons that Ukraine needs, at this time, most importantly, air defense, modern air defense. What would you say to your stronger, more powerful NATO nations and partners? First, uh, we are not uh, the neighbors of Ukraine, so not directly uh, neighbors to the war. Uh, the war is going on in Ukraine, so of course those countries around Ukraine are mostly affected by this, but we all are <laughs> affected by high inflation, high energy prices. This is, this is true. What comes to helping Ukraine, I think uh, all the NATO allies have done a lot, and some talk about what they have, have been giving, and some don't talk about it so publicly, but uh, the resolve is very uh, united. We are very united in this. Uh, nobody talks about stepping away from supporting Ukraine, and this is uh, very important. We must also understand that Russia's aim is to terrorize us, to say that, oh, now the war is spilling over the borders, and now we have to, we have to stop. Actually, it's vice versa. The only thing uh, aggressor understands is strength, and we have to show this unity and resolve. Um, you did actually kind of sidestep my question about the number of, of, of weapons and the, uh, the kind of weapons going, but I'm going to put it a different way then. The Ukrainians have admitted that this is something they tried to intercept, and the result of it is that the debris hit and killed two innocent people across the border in, uh, you know, in Poland. Polish government is saying practically the same thing, and basically all the leaders are saying the same thing. So the question is, is it not time to give Ukraine the modern air defense systems that it needs for this new phase of the war? Because what it was using, allegedly, was an old and outdated Soviet-style uh, anti-aircraft missile. So shouldn't everybody 
In other words, what's the takeaway? What's the, what's the teachable moment from this, if I could put it that way? Uh, we have been calling for all the allies to give everything that they have, uh, also air defense. And air defense is uh, very crucial right now when we see that they are targeting the civilian infrastructure so that it would be very, very difficult to live in Ukraine. Uh, that creates another wave of migration, a wave of uh, refugees that also Europe uh, cannot handle. So, so therefore, air defense, uh, all the equipment uh, that we have uh, must be given to Ukraine so that they can defend themselves. And of course, I can't look into their warehouses. What do they actually have? But I can call uh, on the leaders of, of NATO allies who have more that please look to your storage, look to your warehouses, find things that you have, um, do agreements with uh, private sector who is developing equipment so that uh, we can send the top uh, equipment to Ukraine and end this war once and for all. And finally, Prime Minister, were you afraid, as everybody was overnight, uh, last night, that this might be, you know, that step that you all said would never be tolerated, that one square inch was actually violated by Russia and that you'd all have to jump into major escalation mode? Of course, uh, um, this news is, is very, um, you know, creates anxiety, what is happening now, as we know that Russia is trying to say that uh, from the beginning that Russia is in the war with NATO. So is it really a trigger that they want to show that uh, NATO is really stepping up so they can escalate even more? Or what is it all about? I think we really have to keep a cool head, uh, knowing that uh, that there might be a spillover effect, especially to those countries who are very close. And it is all because Russia is bombing civilian infrastructure, not the military uh, infrastructure that is usually done uh, in, in, in war, but really civilian infrastructure so that it would be impossible to live in Ukraine. And, and that is what uh, they are doing. So we are all bearing the consequences. But, but uh, this is, uh, of course, up to the um, Polish government to say uh, how they want to address this. So far, they have said that they will not start the Article 4 uh, consultations. So let's, uh, let's see. Prime Minister Kaya Kallas, thank you for joining us from Tallinn. Thank you so much. Thank you.